Hello, Mark Crossfield here. We're going to try today TaylorMade RSI 1 slots a clock iron hitting up against the Ping G30. So maybe one of the most famous uh, kind of stable clubs on the market. Let's have a look at the two clubs, look a bit of, talk a little bit about miss hits. let's talk about performance. We've got uh, Tactics Pro V1X balls down here on the floor, my gaming ball. We've also got my GC2 HMD, so we can look at some real ball data. Let's show you how these two clubs match up. Let's get stuck in. Here we go then, Ping G30 uh, RSI1 tailor-made irons. Let's compare them, see how they feel. Obviously very different in appearance. You've got grey kind of gum metally finish on Ping, no ferrule. So the bit around the neck from the shaft to the head, where the RSI1, you get a ferrule, more classic. Slots on the bottom on the face and um, chrome. More offset on the G30 to the uh, RSI1. So I would say the G30 is more striking in its appearance, but it is obviously very true and classic to what Ping have been about for many years, helping people with mishits. They've been doing it from the start of their career, haven't they? Um, if you think about it. Obviously on the TaylorMade you get slots on the bottom. Ping you don't get any slots, but you get a slightly thicker sole, a bit more weight out towards the toe, uh, muscle kind of in the middle of the club as well. Um, yeah, they're quite different in their appearance, but they're kind of appealing maybe to the same kind of players. Let's try RSI 1 to start us off. So I think this will appear uh, to people on a shelf quite appealing with the chrome finish. The slots on it actually do frame the ball up quite nicely. They're not too um, kind of ugly to look at or anything. They do actually complement the iron head not too bad. Um, medium to thin sole uh, or top line on the top. Let's give it a hit to see how it feels. I mean, it just makes a hell of a noise off the face. It does really feel like it shoots. It's got that kind of acoustic. Let's give it another hit. But it does offer some traditional looks to it, which I think will cross over for lots of people. Again, hit that one nice to slightly healy, and that's still flying pretty impressively. Hit that one not bad, maybe fraction towards the toe, but you know, for me, this club is pretty easy to hit. I think it's going to cross over on its looks between better players and people who want help. It's maybe not the most inspiring for help out there, as in for size, but yeah, it, it's quite impressive how it feels, this one. So let's compare it up to... To be honest, you'd be one of my favourites, G30. I think it's one of the most stable clubs out there. Like I say, Ping have been talking miss hits from day dot. More offset. This club, it's got that grey finish, which I like. Some people won't because it's not maybe as what people would call classically pretty. And it hasn't got the ferrule, which for some people is not off-putting, but it just strikes as not a, a, a beautifully finished club. Let's give it a hit, though. Again, I caught that one not bad, slightly out the bottom, but it's flying really nicely, no problem lifting that. I do feel with G30 that I can give it to nearly any golfer and they've got no problem getting the ball up in the air with it. Let's give it another hit. I love the look of this. I grew up with Ping. I've used I2s, which was maybe the most famous cavity back built for Mystic tie and ever built. Um, uh, and I like this look. I like this kind of traditional Ping to its heritage look of the club. I think lots of people do as well, they buy into that. Yeah, it's certainly not as loud off the face. It's not got that kind of zooped up clip that the TaylorMade offers, but you wouldn't expect that from Ping. Again, they kind of just kind of, kind of trot along producing just good irons without all the bells and whistles so much. One more hit. Very easy to get up in the air, I do feel like I could keep it down, and it does feel very friendly across the whole face, this one. Like the TaylorMade does also. I'm looking forward to seeing the numbers on these. Is there going to be a particular difference? I'm really intrigued to see if there is, to be honest. Um, it's going to be so horses for courses when you're picking that on looks, because they look very different. I would go ping, but that's because I've got ping that look in my kind of heart. Um, but I could see why people think RSI 1 is maybe looking prettier and more classic. Let's have a look at the numbers and see if they would sway your buying ideas between G30 and RSI 1 in any way. Let's check these numbers out.
Right guys, numbers time. TaylorMade RSI 1 hitting up against the uh, Ping G30. RSI 1, TaylorMade 183 is the average distance. Uh, peaking height at 32 yards. Ping G30 175, peaking height. Got a misread on the height there, but they're peaking height at 34 average. Um, interesting, five, six, seven, eight yards difference between TaylorMade and the Ping on those ones. So that for me, on those two tests, the TaylorMade is going further. The TaylorMade is half a degree stronger static loft. So there's a little bit of the answer in there for me straight away. Um, why is the pin going out a little bit higher? Well, look at the spin, 6-1. I was spinning those with the ping. We're down at 4-7 with the um, TaylorMade. So it'd be interesting, actually, if I did another test to see if those spin numbers stay, because they're very, very different. Other thing to think about as well with the ping, it's got a little bit more offset, I would argue, which might help push that ball up a little bit higher, um, a little bit more spin, a little bit more height. Um, I did launch it at 17.5 down to 16.6 from Taylor May, so almost a degree higher with the G30, which I can only think of is uh, it's me in when I'm testing, or it's that little bit of offset is introducing maybe a little bit more loft in the ping, which is why we're getting more height, a bit more spin, and dropping back in those distances. For me, both of those clubs felt and looked like they performed the same. I didn't particularly see any more height out of the ping. I do feel like I can get more height out of the ping. I feel like if I had to hit one over a tree, the help of offset and the kind of chunkiness of its appearance makes me feel like I could get it up higher on the nose test I could see. So think about it, if you wanted ping and you didn't want the RSI, then maybe you could get your loft slightly strengthened in the pings to try and knock those numbers down and keep it up with the TaylorMade if the distance number was upsetting you. If you just wanted distance on those two tests, for me, I would have to go RSI, but I would certainly like to delve deeper in a fit to see if I could move those numbers and if they're true to me hitting maybe more and more and more, more shots to see if those averages stay as they are. Interesting numbers. Um, again, uh, one other thing actually with the slots to club with no slots. The thing for me, you've got to remember, Ping, the company Ping was founded on trying to help people hit better shots, certainly on the miss hits. They almost invented the cavity back iron. The whole miss hits concept is nothing new. Ping did it at day one when they founded their company. Um, two yards difference in the shortest hit to the longest hit RSI. Uh, two yards difference, 76 to 74, 176 to 174 in the Ping G30 um, from my worst hit to my best hit. <sighs> I'm not seeing those slots guys doing much apart from giving you visual tech that ties into their taglines. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm saying they're probably gonna help you, but I'm not sure they're gonna help you more and other clubs that are out there. Let me know what you think. Post comments down below. Interesting numbers, G30, not as long for me than RSI 1, but I could get it as long as if I wanted to, specking the club up. That's what it fits all about. Um, I think for miss hits, which is where the big campaign is, you gotta remember Ping have been talking about miss hits since day one of their golfing life as a company. Uh, nothing new there, but Taylor made us certainly give you some visual tech that might help you kind of focus a little bit more and feel confident about your miss hits. Go and test them, go and try them for yourself, go and do your own fit. Uh, this is a little bit of a guide of how I'm hitting them. Thanks for watching. Speak to you all soon. So if you like what's going on here, don't be afraid to subscribe to the channel. Also, thumbs up the video, post comments. Love to hear what you guys got to say. Let's keep it social. The more we talk, the more we share, the easier this game will get for, uh, for everybody. So if you want to find me on Facebook here, you can find me on Facebook. If you want to tweet me, find me on Twitter here as well. Just follow the links all in the description. Come and join the show. Get active, get involved, get playing some better golf. Thanks for watching.